Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a revision question on differential equations. So let's take a look at the question. Question number one, dy over dx is equal to y squared plus one multiplied by ln x, where x is bigger than zero. Given y is equal to zero when x equals one, find y in terms of x. So let's think about how we're going to do this question. So back to the paper and pen. So here's the equation that we have, dy over dx, and that is y squared plus 1 into ln x. And here are the values for x and y that we've got as part of the problem. Now, first of all, let's see whether this equation is a first order differential equation. So let's see whether we can rearrange this in the type py dy over dx is equal to q of x. And if it is possible to rearrange the given differential equation in this form, this would make our equation a first order differential equation. So let's see where we can rearrange it in this form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the y squared plus 1 to the left hand side. So if I divide both sides by y squared plus 1, I'll have 1 over y squared plus 1 dy over dx and that is equal to ln x on the right. Now if you pause there for a moment this equation is indeed of the type py dy over dx equals q of x so py the function of y in this case is 1 over y squared plus 1 whereas qx the function of x is ln x. So this equation is indeed a first order differential equation. Now, just as a reminder, let's go to this screenshot. So remember, since we have the equation of the type py dy over dx equals q of x, not only it's a first order differential equation, but we need to solve that first order differential equation using separating the variables. But let's go to the next screenshot. So this screenshot, explains the method involved when it comes to separating the variables and in step number one remember the idea we need to write on one side of the equation all terms involving y and dy while all remaining terms involving the remaining variable i.e x and dx appears on the opposite side of the equation so let's do that let's rearrange terms so back to the paper and pen so let's separate variables. So by separating variables. So if we regard dy over dx as a fraction, so technically it's a function, but if we re regard it, or if you think about it as a fraction, I can take the dx term to the right, leaving me with 1 over y squared plus 1, the y term, along with dy on the left hand side and keeping the ln x term on the right or the x term on the right, if I regard this dy over dx as a fraction, I can take the dx term to the right as well. So this is what we mean by separating the variables. Now my y terms including dy on the left hand side and the x terms including dx appear on the right hand side. It doesn't matter where you arrange your terms, you can keep your x and dx terms on the left hand side and the y and dy terms on the right hand side, but the emphasis is the variables must be separated. Now let's go back to the screenshot. Step number two, we then integrate both sides of the equation to find the solution, in particular the general solution. So we need to integrate the left hand side, we need to integrate the right hand side. Back to the paper and pen. So this is step number one. Let's go to step number two. So S2 refers to step number two, S1 refers to step number one. So in step number two, let's integrate both sides. So we need to integrate the left hand side. So we're going to integrate 1 over y squared plus 1 with respect to y. We also need to integrate the right hand side which is 
the integral of ln x with respect to x. Now let's think about these two integrals. So let me call this integral number one. Let's call this right hand integral number two. And as a side calculation, let's think about integral number one. So let's think about the integral of one over y squared plus one with respect to y. Now let me pause there for a moment because there is a result that will help us with this integral. So here's the result. So I'll write the result in red as a reminder. Whenever you integrate an integral of the type one over x squared plus a squared with respect to x, and here's the result, it's one over a tan inverse or the inverse tan of x over a plus c for completeness. So we need to apply this result to integrate such an integral. So if you're unaware about this result, I have created a video showing how this result can be derived as well as showing examples of how this result can be applied and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Back to the question in hand. So let's integrate this. So beforehand, let's write this as one over y squared plus one is the same as one squared with respect to y. So if we make the comparison here with the result with what we have, x is basically y and a is one. So in this case, x in our formula is y, a by comparison is one. So if I replace these terms to this form on the right hand side, we're gonna have as a result, one over a, so one over a, which is one, inverse tan or tan inverse x, x replaced by y, divided by the a term, which is one. Let's just add c for completeness. So that is the solution to the left hand side so far, number one. If we simplify this, 1 over 1 is 1, so tan inverse y over 1 is y plus c. So that is what we should have for the left hand term. Let's focus on that right hand term. So let's integrate to the integration of ln x number 2 as a side calculation. Let's do this on the reverse. So on the reverse, number 2 integration of ln x with respect to x. Now to integrate ln x we need to integrate that by parts. So before I apply by parts let me write this integral as a product of two terms. So I can write ln x as ln x times 1 and the reason why I wrote it as a product is because I can choose my u and my dv over dx term in order to apply the biparts formula. So remember the biparts formula. So biparts, here's the result. The formula is the integration of u dv over dx. That is equal to uv minus the integration of v du over dx with respect to x. Now with the biparts formula, we need to choose u and dv over dx, especially so that v du over dx can be easy to integrate later on. So I recommend choosing u to be ln x. So let me take u to be ln x. And that means that dv over dx, the remaining term is gonna be one. And by choosing u to be ln x especially, that would make v du over dx easy to integrate. So du over dx, when I differentiate ln x, it's one over x. V can be found by integrating dv over dx, which is one with respect to x. And when I integrate one, it's x. So I know du over dx and I know v, for us to apply this by parts formula. Let's substitute the data in. So for the left hand term, 
So we have the integration of u, u is ln x times dv over dx, which is one, ln x times one is ln x. So this term on the left of the biparts formula should correspond to what you're integrating. And that is equal to u, which is ln x, multiplied by v, v is x, minus, so minus, the integration of v, which is x, times du over dx, which is 1 over x. Now, before you integrate, I would tidy it up. So tidy it up, the term on the right-hand side, before you carry out this integral. So I can cancel these two x's to leave me with x times ln x is x ln x minus the integral of and as a result of this cancellation we're left with 1 with respect to x to integrate. So if I go one more stage we'll have x ln x minus integration of 1 is x plus c for completeness. So this is the solution to integral number 2 so let me go to the reverse 2 is this integral on the right hand side. We also have the solution to the left hand integral number 1, that is the inverse tan of y. Let's put this together to solve this equation here. So for the left, I've got the inverse tan of y. So the inverse tan of y, that is equal to, and for number 2, here is the solution. So for number two, we have x ln x minus x plus c. So x ln x minus x plus c. Now, when it comes to adding c, you can add c on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Now, I always tend to add the constant on the right-hand side, but that's entirely your preference. So this solution over here, this is our general solution however we're far from finished so if we go back to the question we've been given the y value and the x value so y equals zero x equals one let's use these values to work out the value of the integration constant back to the paper and pen so the y value given is zero the x value given is one let's replace y and x in our general solution so we have tan inverse y, which is zero, that is equal to x, which is one, ln x, which is one, minus x replaced by one plus c. So in this case, if you go one more stage, inverse tan of zero, so let me take a red pen, inverse tan of zero is zero, ln one is zero, so one into zero is zero, so you just have this term remaining, but if we rearrange that, the c is going to be 1. So that is the value of the integration constant. Lastly, let's replace c. So let's replace this c in our general solution. So let's get the particular solution. So the particular solution, when I replace the c value of 1, will be tan inverse y. And that is equal to x ln x minus x plus the c value being 1. So that should be the solution to the differential equation for question number 1. So not only that is the solution, that ends the video sadly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did enjoy the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. And also, if you're not familiar with the concepts that I've applied to solve this question, I will provide links to videos showing you the method and the concepts in detail, along with additional examples in the description below. Other than that, I hope to see you again. Thank you.